ओके सो टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट व्हाट डज इट मीन आर्किटेक्चरली व्हाट डज इट मीन टू बिल्ड एन ओपन प्लेटफॉर्म और डिजिटल पब्लिक गुड्स और अ डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नॉट नेसेसरली डिजिटल सोल्यूशन बट डेफिनेटली वेन यू बिल्ड अ डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज पब्लिक गुड एस्पेशली एट स्केल what do you keep in mind and what are the architecture principles we keep in mind the first one that you want to definitely think about is um before you start off realize the fact that the system is complex diverse and the needs solution needs of the eventual consumers eventual actors in that infrastructure uh, varies and varies big time and when that happens as an architect how do you architect the underlying platform underlying infrastructure to support diversity so you want to think about unified unified in the sense that everyone works in tandem connected orchestrated but not uniform an example of that is uh, html on the web uh, gave us unification of the web but when i come to your site and when i go to somebody else site your persona or the website's persona is so different but i can still use the same browser to see your site as well as somebody else site so the specification who built underlying specification called html and http which is a protocol which is part of the infrastructure allows that unif- unified manner of the web without making it uniform and that's a very important aspect to keep in mind and the second aspect as you start to think about when you start to think about uh, infrastructure especially not a solution at scale you want to be able to keep platform thinking in mind that means you want to be a platform on top of which many solutions are built many diverse solutions are built and that requires you to think you know for a fact that build for a fact that you are not building all solutions you are probably not building even one solution now if you take an iphone analogy they built few solutions android built few solutions google mail google maps they're all solutions but the android as an operating system allowed anybody else to build an alternate mail system as well now the trick here again is that when you build an infrastructure or a platform not necessarily knowing how the solutions will evolve by somebody else uh, makes the design of the platform thinking very conscious and there and that it needs extensibility api thinking um, you know the fact that you don't drive all the rules of the game somebody else can build a completely different experience on top of you and being at peace with it at that infrastructure is very very key when we, when you think of platform when you want to build an infrastructure uh um, especially infrastructure as a public good and that's something which a lot of us have been building as in our experience the most important thing to do is to actually unbundle the problem and we as engineers we are very tempted to actually solve and distributing the ability for somebody else to solve is not at all natural and you have to force that upon you if you're a product manager if you're an engineer we want to solve it because we know how to solve right as engineers so but the real trick is actually not to solve it is unbundle the problem statement ask the why behind the why why behind the why unbundle it to atomic very 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 atomic pieces of the puzzle and then you ask the question as a platform builder as an infrastructure builder which pieces that you should build so that others can build thousands of innovations on top of it and that unbundling is not algorithmic it's an art a little bit of an art but you have to go through it but if you don't unbundle you will have a monolithic solution thinking and not a platform thinking and when you unbundle and that when you unbundle what do you get 
when you unbundle to micro you get microservices and microservices i'm using microservices slightly as a generic term not necessarily as a strict um, uh, you know techie term it meant it means that you build one thing one small atomic service that does one thing really well but even then you ask the question do you need to build that microservice or can the ecosystem build that microservice if the ecosystem can build the microservice what do you need to do so that ecosystem can build a microservice so whatever you are doing also need to be a set of microservices but minimalistic in nature so that what you are trying to arrive at and that unbundling exercise in the head is actually necessary for reaching the microservices architecture and when you do microservice what do you end up doing is um, encapsulating um, the fu one functionality one really simple one thing into a service interface where you ask something and you get something out not knowing how it really does it but your that encapsulation into a microservice is the key and when you build microservice as an architect i can tell you for sure from my experience that you will never get it right in the first time and you will never know how the industry is going to evolve ecosystem is going to evolve solutions are going to evolve so real question of evolvability or that actually means the microservices being refactorable replaceable improvable in one sense right that's because it's part of evolvability if you have to evolve and an example is uh, this is an important part um, of building and it's very tricky for an engineer and that's why i want to talk about this a little bit saying for us we have been taught to get it right in the beginning uh, and one thing you learn through experience that you'll never get it right then what do you get it right so that you don't have to get it right you know that's that trick is that then what you are actually getting it right is the interface so what do you get it right is the encapsulated microservice interface not the implementation behind it so you might write a little bit of a bad code and get it started nothing wrong and then evolve but since you built evolvability into the architecture through the encapsulation through the replaceability aspects of it you are confident that even if you come across a new um, scenario that you want to uh, use or apply in your network you know you can actually rewrite improve replace with a completely better microservice it also comes in handy when technology is changing this is when one of the things that you learn as technology is every 4 5 years the technology is dramatically changing and that change needs constant maintenance and constant fix otherwise platforms go stale becomes unmaintainable there's a word you hear right becomes very very messy to maintain so think of like a house at humanity we have done everything in humanity's human scale is through unbundling and through making it replaceable think of a house think of a car imagine you have to build your door knobs to doors to glass to bricks to cement to everything yourself you didn't have to a large ecosystem a diverse ecosystem is building variety of components but they all come together somehow naturally and you can replace and that maintenance is needed whether you maintaining a house or maintaining a car constant maintenance is required and the architecture is amenable to do that so we spoke unbundling into a microservices make it replaceable and to fundamentally the doing of that is through what's called an interface what is interface doing is the interface with the microservices actually receiving the input and generating output so it's a very small interface and you know any components for that matter they connect so like a lego blocks the connecting part is called an interface and how does it seamlessly connect to each other and that sets up very nicely for a uh, ecosystem to build co com components 
uh, or microservices that are interoperable. The interoperability is the crux of a uh, federated nature of the network. So when, when a federated set of actors, many actors in the ecosystem have to develop many things and they come together into a shape of solution. Finally, when your solution, so you are building a house is your solution to live yourself there. And when you build that, your needs are very personalized. But using the same components that built by a large ecosystem without even knowing how your house is going to look like. Uh, so that's very, very important part of that interoperability design. And interoperability and interface are actually um, interchangeably used. In interfaces give you interoperability. So the, every microservice should have a well-defined interface so that any other actor in the ecosystem developing any other microservices should be able to connect into this microservice and create a larger solution out of it. And when you we remember when we spoke about diversity, the need of diversity when you do a platform thinking is that not knowing how the solutions will emerge. Uh, it's also important that when you build microservices, uh, even that one thing, doing it really well, even within that one thing, you have to ask the questions about how much of options you want to give so that it is configurable and not, need not be programmed or changed. You don't have to replace, rip, replace stuff. If the same component actually can be reconfigured or same service can be reconfigured to your need, and why is the new need? It goes back to diversity. Diversity necessitates the requirement that solutions have all millions of solutions will come and those solutions will be so personalized eventually uh, it will require and if they have to replace you, it's a higher cost or refactor you, it's higher cost. But if you configure you, it's a lower cost. I suppose so giving configurability allows your service, that one thing you wrote, to be adaptable to different solutions and needs because you are given those options. And that is a very conscious thing again when you design a microservice. What is the interface and what options do you want to give? So that the microservice can behave a little differently in different contexts. And typically when you do operating system thinking, infrastructure thinking, and most of the people actually think like this because they, know, they don't know what apps will come and what solutions will come. Here I am actually switching a little bit to from a diversity of building a microservice, infrastructure, interface, um, interoperable microservice we talked about, to what it means to work at scale. So when you want your microservice, one, five, ten microservices that you wrote, or components that you built, required to be scaled to millions and billions of transactions or interactions or usages of that nature, you have to worry about scalability, the scalability of your microservice. Now, if every microservice worried about their scalability and ensure that each microservice is scalable, the collective solution of these microservices put together into a shape also becomes scalable and is a little bit of extra work, but nevertheless, but you can't be a post facto. You cannot say, my microservices, I don't know how it's going to be used. So I don't know it's going to be scalable, but the solution, people who build solutions will end up figuring out how to scale. That's not going to work. It's important that even when you build a microservice, you have to actually ask the question, which actually is nice in one sense, okay? Actually an engineer, I can tell you for sure. When you build that one thing, it's easier to think that in that context of that one thing, one thing is it well interfaced, is it configurable? Is it you know, backward compatible and evolvable? But along with that, you also ask, is that one thing scalable to millions of calls and transactions and so on? And scalability, when you build that scalability, one of the most important thing that you build is telemetry and observability of that uh, behavior. Uh, into that scalability, right? So you have to make sure that to use it at scale, you need to actually build telemetry to make it observable because again, 
goes back to the fundamental uh, ex you know go through the experience you realize you don't get it right in the first time you don't even know how it's going to be used if you don't know any of that how do you make it observable so that you can fix it later you can know and this telemetry the word comes from uh, the space uh, tele means far and metry is metrics and measurement uh, measuring from far right and this comes from the you know the world of satellites and so on where uh, we couldn't throw humans to space to figure out whether the solar panel is working well or the heat sensor is working well you can't go and check just figure out how hot it is right everything had to be built into the system to send telemetry from far but the good thing that you learn from that architecture is that when your microservice is working at scale and you cannot be everywhere watching physically by humans watching to see what's going on the only way to do is systemic observability systemic observability requires the thinking of telemetry and telemetry is a means of emitting just minimum set of data from each time the microservice is used each time the microservice is good it emits a little bit of a you know sensory uh, okay the, let's say it's a payment microservice every time that's called it actually emits a little bit saying that yeah this happened this happened this happened and this happened and then you can assimilate that stream of events and today's technology easily allow you to do that and just assimilate then observe saying that what's going on right that's very very key we already spoke of scalability and scalability uh, is integral part of building for population scale scale at which you want your microservice or infrastructure to work it's important that scalability is thought from the time the first microservice is built not as an afterthought you don't say i'll build everything and then test it out and when you test it out we'll figure out whether it's scaling the the designer of the microservice or the architect of the microservice think about whether that microservice scales and if every microservice scales hopefully the solution scale but you know then you can test the solution as well later but the scalability is by design and this is one of the things people actually ask do you buy scalable products from the industry when you build especially when you build public infrastructure and uh, public goods a uh, lot of us um, tend to use open components and technology so the real question they ask is that how do you get that kind of scalability and if you are not using a particular product so i always tell them actually this is very important that scalability doesn't come from because you bought a product or because you chose a product scalability comes from design because every system has some scalability limits every system has their own quirk, uh, you know issues and quirks and you have to with ideas to make sure the architecture you think about scalability scalability horizontally that means as the usage increases the system scales or the microservices scales in that nature and when anything works at scale um, definitely something which i tell almost all developers is that you think your service is very well tested it won't fail i'm can write it and guarantee you that it fails that means almost everything fails at scale at scale now during your early periods of testing you may not see the failure and because you are in the honeymoon period right you are testing you know 100 users and everything seems to be working well but the real question is that if you know for a fact that at scale pieces of your puzzle solution some microservices here some machines here some components here are starting to fail the real question you have to ask is that not don't ask the question how can i prevent failure you at least from my experience you cannot prevent failure you can ask the question how do i deal with the failure so when you architect your question is that do i have a spare tire or will i make sure my tire will never burst and i prefer a spare tire knowing that in reality you can unpredictable events failure is nature and you will see nature failure in everything that's failing failure resilience is that you are trying to build so you you build micro from every first microservices you build build resilience if that fails what happened when machine fails what happened when a network fails what happened when a disk fails what happens when um, users fail 
to users fail to do something what happens in the system you know it's very important very important that you build resilience by asking that question knowing that every piece will fail ask the question what happens when you fail what will happen what will happen and that, that just the art of asking you will be surprised that you will actually naturally come up with solutions that actually deal with the failure not prevents failure and which is called resilience part of the system when you build an uh, open infrastructure uh, especially for dealing with diversity especially in infrastructure on top of hundreds of other people innovators will build solutions around you um, the very natural way to build uh, trust and privacy uh, and security starts morphing and i want to talk about privacy and security a little bit here is that uh, the security when you run the entire system using your people is slightly different and you start thinking about because it's your people your system you control it control the rules you control everything uh, you tend to be slightly more relaxed in one sense saying that okay security i'm in control platform thinking that completely goes out of whack where your infrastructure apis or microservices used by somebody to build an application to give it to some end user who is actually hoping that the privacy is taken care or security is taken care in the end to end chain of transactions so the question you are asking as a platform thinker is twofold how do you build privacy and security into you, what you capture in the platform point number 1 which is that in the platform how do you ensure the platform microservices are secure trustable and you apply the minimalism capability data minimalism uh, and ask the question do you really need to capture their data do i really need to do so and so these are questions that you ask in every microservice when you build a microservice you can ask for 10 data points or you can ask for two and if two does it it's privacy friendly than 10 right so you ask this from day one in the design time itself but the second aspect of platform is not that where you are not controlling so you, let's you took care of privacy and security in your microservices in your platform but others are building solution on top of it so what are the rules that you set as a platform or the ecosystem that comes around this infrastructure what are the common rules that we all will adopt but is the actors of the infra who participate in this platform e economy in one sense whether it's a commercial or whether it's non commercial what are the rules they follow that means you have to do two things you have to define privacy and security and build privacy and security into your microservice you have to define privacy and security rules for the actors of the ecosystem and the rules need not be defined just by you it can be co-created by you among your participants of a ecosystem but not thinking about it is not correct thinking later post facto is almost non doable in the in the digital world so you have to think every step you are making you are asking the question is it secure is it privacy friendly is it secure is it privacy friendly and what are the rules that we should all agree to so that collectively the end to end transaction from an app built by someone who is dealing with somebody's data who in turn uses somebody's microservices in turn uses your microservices and some, somehow completes that service to the end user how does the entire chain become privacy friendly how does the entire chain become secure okay so it's a you play two roles you play system leadership role in defining and co-creating the rules and second thing is what do you build you make sure that it is privacy friendly and security through minimalism and in you know, a conscious architecture principles that you think of and a connected part of the privacy and security is also trust can somebody conduct a transaction and claim that they didn't do can somebody conduct a transaction and whether uh, nobody knows whether that person did it or not or can somebody alter the transaction value look at payments or look at anything else they're doing or any other data for that matter 
uh, any large infrastructure you worry about how do you establish collective trust trust in the platform it goes back to the same two principles in like privacy what do you use to build trust within your platform and the three um, tools that you can use to build trust from day one is registry an electronic registry of actors actors means entities people machines everything needs to be in the registry so that means you know who what which machine who when what right got done so that part of the noun part of the uh, uh, transaction is very clear not knowing it's not about i don't know who did it i don't know who altered the transaction you can't be saying like that you need to actually build use registry to do that then you build electronic signature to make it non tamperable end to end that means once you sign once your party signs once are the counterparty signs it becomes non repeatable and non alterable that means it cannot be altered by design that's how digital electronic signatures work so extensively use electronic signatures on top of registry and then you bring attestation why do you need attestation if you are actually doing everything yourself and if you are a full stack solution play you probably need less of attestation but if you are a platform play and if you are an infrastructure play where a large set of actors entities and people are going to work with you then you need to also attest them attest machines attest people attest entities to ensure that the the trust is created collectively in the network and then the low trust people are or low, low trust entities or low trust machines are taken slowly out of the game out of the network and not in the network and this this is not a policing aspect of it at all it is by building attestation from day one on a registry using electronic signature suddenly allows tools for you and now these are all tools you still have to think about what does it mean if i wrongly attest somebody if i correctly attest can somebody do a denial of service by uh, uh, sort of coming together and attesting a wrongly to somebody can you take the eject them out these are all conscious Uh, rules that you think on top of the platform, but the tools that you use are these three: registries, electronic signatures, attestation. But then you build rules, co-create the rules to make sure these tools are not uh, that used correctly, and the good things prevail mostly, and negative things don't prevail uh, most of the time. So we spoke of. unbundling into microservices building interfaces that are replaceable interoperable in a way that is allowing scalability um trust privacy and security these are all design principles that we walk through but when you actually sit down to build as an engineer then you have to choose technologies uh, that allow especially if you are building digital public infrastructure a private infrastructure might have slightly different um business reasons that you choose something but definitely if you're building an open public infrastructure uh, the two things two aspects of that uh, choice is one is the trend in commoditization and trend is your friend uh, and it's very important that you actually leverage the wave and you watch that example what does it becoming commoditized then write that commoditization rather than against it for example i can tell you when we build really large scale an identity system for the for for a large scale population uh, we had to choose the technology that allows us uh, high parallel computing uh, technologies now i could have chosen a proprietary uh, parallel computing system it might have helped in the short term uh, by getting off the ground because we just picked up something but we we at that time still chose a commodity computing architecture by choice knowing that moore's law will catch up you know computing will just double every year it's only getting cheaper and if you use commodity products you have more providers to give it to you rather than a proprietary one off product so always choose commodity computing products li- libraries algorithms choose always 
lean on the commoditization side and go with the commodity, embrace commoditization. Maybe you can commoditize few things by yourself as well as you build it. But when you commoditize, suddenly it becomes a large ecosystem backing you up and you sort of ride that thing. And the same reason for heterogeneity. When you choose commodity and when you choose any off the shelf with available free products, suddenly you realize that you cannot choose the entire system to be homogeneous. The same reason why we said uniform versus unified. If your solutions are not homogeneous, why should the platform inside when you sit down to build a platform, why should you choose homogeneous components? That means you should be able to use, for example, in the computing, you should, we used blade servers from any, any, so we have, you know, in our computing grid, you could put Dell blade server, HP blade servers, or whatever blade servers you can get uh, and mix and match. The question at that time you're asking is, does your architecture allow that heterogeneity? Architecture allow mixing and matching of many commodity products, but behaving like a, a unified system. If you can get that right, you generally have an upper hand for two reasons. One, you are riding the commoditization drive. Right? The other one is you are not hosted by a single uh, provider, whether it's a vendor, whether it's technologies or not. One, one thing that you depend on, without it, the whole system breaks. That's a pretty bad situation to be in. So embrace commodity, computer, computer, computing, commoditization, and embrace heterogeneity from day one. Make sure you're mixing and matching and creating a unified layer and not looking for uniform. And second part of the commoditization heterogeneity is open source, use of open source. Open source in the last two decades have demonstrated to us that it is a trend that you can't beat. Openness always wins. So if you were to bet on one thing, especially an infrastructure that you build, almost all public infrastructure takes a minimum a decade, decade before it becomes in the system, used by everyone every day if it has to be in the society used minimum you're talking about a decade so the second part of building we talked about commoditization heterogeneity uh, second part of it is using openness being open that means you embrace openness you use open source uh, technologies open source algorithms open source libraries open source products the re especially this is key when you're building digital public goods and private goods you might have a choice of choosing a proprietary product and still okay for it because you time to market and maybe some of that might drive the decision. But when you build digital public infrastructure, it takes a decade for the infrastructure to actually fall in place and becomes a routine in the society and you know a thriving ecosystem using that uh, infrastructure. First five years is to go to irreversibility and the next five years at least to take to a routine and habit and it's used everywhere. And when you look at 10 years, you have to bet on openness and openness, even while short term, it does act as a little bit of a friction to you uh, in the long run in wins. And if you're building any population scale, digital public infrastructure, I think it's normal. It's no more a choice. It's, it's a necessity that you embrace open source and open standards and open technologies. And when you actually implement um, on a day-to-day large-scale transaction system or large-scale platform that has billions of interactions that is going on, uh, you realize human beings start becoming, and especially operating a system like that, uh, human beings start becoming a bottleneck. There's two reasons. It's not really the cost issue. Cost issue is there, uh, but more than that, it is the the fact that we are very error prone. Humans are very error prone in doing repeating tasks. So anything that is repeatable, anything that needs long term sustainability to run, you need to be able to automate. Especially when you operate a platform. I'm not talking about automation of automating people out of the system. Operating a large machinery in that same sense uh, requires consistency and consistency and repeatability and predictability. 
and machines are really good at it and you don't need to put the human beings through that and so let the uh, people in your team become programmers of the automation rather than just doing the work every day right and extreme automation i use the word extreme automation for a reason is that automation is no more especially in a microservices large scale public infrastructure automation is no more a good to have it's a must have in fact i even tell my engineers automation is the only way to do for example how do you know the microservices that you offer which are used by thousands of partners millions of transactions has not broken something a broken a promise of the microservice you promised to somebody that if you give me this input i will give you this output in a predictable way how do you know it's not broken when you fixed a code some engineer wrote some code how do you know this is almost impossible to test all possible scenarios manually again and again so automation in the world of microservices in the world of platform thinking where others depend on you and you don't know what solutions actually out there exist who depend on you automation is no more a good to have it's a must have and should be thought from the day one and it's a little bit tricky because automation is a costly affair it does take early investment and almost you will have the temptation to say i'll do it later but from my experience i can tell you the moment you say i'll do it later you're digging yourself into a big deep hole okay that is very tough to come back to so from the first microservice you write make sure you're automating from day one and to come back and sort of close so we watch and maybe think through this in your head we want a diversity we want a platform thinking for that we said we'll unbundle everything to really minimalistic microservices but make it interoperable through an interface very well done and we said we have to build it not knowing how we will evolve so we have to evolveability and replaceability has to be done but when you build it the two things that you talk about security privacy is and trust is something which you bake it in into the system and then you bet on openness and open source to sort of build the first microservices and the second one and go building scalability from day one through telemetry and so on so we talked about all that thing but at the end of the day i can all tell you is that the the real crux in the game is to not give it to temptation to build more and more actually to build less and less especially if you are a digital public infrastructure building platform thinking you pretty much ask all the time why should you build anything at all if you can write one open standard document and build nothing and get the entire ecosystem to build and solve that problem that's what you want to do so the minimalism of what you do is extremely sort of like almost against what you have been probably doing it if you're in a private company building products you want more features you want more customers you want customers you want more to be created so you're thinking more and more and more in fact i'm telling less and less and less when you do public infrastructure it's all about being less it's all about being extremely minimalist and if you really didn't have to do anything don't do anything or do one thing really well that spurs the ecosystem and actually helps the ecosystem to solve so keep this in mind you are always building only worrying about distributing the ability to solve because you are not solving you are only wanting the ecosystem to solve so to distribute the ability you are asking if i can give one tool that allows everybody to solve i want to give only one tool why should i give 10 tools so minimalism simplicity is the only thing that works at scale